Welcome back to another video. I know y'all like these how to videos and I've had several people ask for a tail scale video. So I decided to do a tail scale video. I will say that I have to think if y'all know big maxi from Facebook on our deep in page that we have, there's a link for that. If y'all need that, where we discuss different projects and stuff. Um, also he's on discord, but I was very stubborn in the beginning when I was with the previous project. And once I had 20 or 30 devices going and I was absolutely losing my mind and with all the changes they kept constantly making and stuff. And I would have to drive an hour, hour and a half to family members, houses and different things like that. It got old quick. And he was the one that showed me and convinced me after my stubborn hard headedness to try tail scale up. And I don't know how I lived without it. The fact that it's free is just beyond me. Um, almost one of those too good to be true type of things for what they offer. I don't know how they're making money when, you know, unless it's other services and stuff like that, but it's, it's a true gift because now I can set up a device, whether it's wing bits or even on bit harvest and I can put tail scale on it and I can mail it or just meet a friend of mine and give them that device. And once they plug it into their, in their internet at home, I can use my tail scale account to access that device and only that device. And what's good about it also is in a little while, when I show you the dashboard, it doesn't matter if you see my IPs or my devices, because you can only access my devices if you sign in under my account. So if you don't have to sign into my account, which you won't have, you won't be able to access those IPs. So it's kind of like a double protection type of thing. So for those who don't know, Tailscale is basically a VPN. It's your own private VPN that doesn't know I could access this from my computer at work or my home computer or anything like that. As long as I log in, I will see a list of all my devices. I can name my de those devices at the different host locations and stuff like that. So I know the differences between them. And like I said, it's free. So let's start digging into a little bit. So for y'all, if this is your first time using Tailscale, you're going to press get started so that you can sign up and you know, you can use one of these sign ons if you want. Um, there's different ways of doing it, but I know I sign up with one of these options because it's just, it's a lot easier for me. All right, so I used another email address that I have signed in under that email address. And like I said, welcome, and let's add your first device. So you can add this to Windows or these other devices, but for our example that we're gonna do today, whether you're doing WingBits devices, like I said, some other project that uses Linux or something like that, um, WingBits or like BitHarvest, and you want to be able to get into that. So we're going to click Lint, you know, Linux. And when you do that, it's going to give you a install script. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm installing tail scale on this computer I'm using so that this computer will be the one that connects into what it needs to connect to. So this is a windows machine and I'm going to hit download tail scale for windows. It's going to run this little setup down here, which you need to go ahead and run that. And that's going to put a tail scale little icon in the bottom system tray. So after that installs, when you click this, you will now see that tail scales right here. You might have to log into it. It was already logged in for me, but I already had tail scale installed on this computer. So, you know, you might have to re, you know, add this. So now when I go to my dashboard, all right, so I'm gonna start out with a clean, fresh install here. This is a new card that I just made for a left potato. So I have nothing on it. So this, I've already did a apt update just to get everything updated like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the tail scale on it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to add device like we saw earlier, the Linux device, and I'm copying this. So now I'm going back to 
my device here and I'm right click right clicking one time and I'm hitting enter. And it's going to, it's going to, going to install Tailscale. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video so it's not too long for y'all. And then when this is done installing, I'll be back. All right, so we're at the end of our install script. I haven't touched anything. Just started up the video again. And this is the screen that you see here. So what you have to then come do is put your cursor back right here, and you're going to type exactly what's right above that. Tail scale, one word, space up, and hit enter. So that's starting tail scale for you, and then it's going to say to authenticate, visit this address. So you're going to copy this whole address. Or well, I highlight it and press control C to copy it. You're then coming back to your website for your tail scale um, application, whatever you want to call it. And I'm pressing add device. I'm sorry. You're then coming over to back to the screen for tail scale and I'm opening a new tab in Chrome and I'm right clicking and pasting that address that we got off of the tail scale highlight right here. All right. And when I hit enter in Chrome, it's going to ask me to log in again. I'm logging in. It asked me, do I want to connect? Now this address that you see right here, this name is device is the same thing that is named on this side. So you can see that it's named that, you know, or right here. So I'm pressing connect. Login successful. So you can either stay right here after a few seconds, it's going to bring you back to the, what they call the console. After a few seconds, there you go. So now what I do is since I have several La potatoes that all going to have the same name, you can easily go right here where this three dots is and I'm editing machine name. You have to turn this off and you can name it. So if this one's at main street, 100 block, I can put main 100. If this is at Joe's house, you can put Joe's, you know, wing bits or something like that. So we'll leave it as Joe's wing bits. So I'm going to hit update name. Now it says Joe's wing bits. This is the IP that's going to be for Joe's wing pits. All right. So I'm going to show you all how that works. So I'm going to close this out right here. So I'm closing this whole SSH session. All right. So we're going to open up putty which is what I use for SSH. And I'm going to paste that IP that they gave me. And here we are. We now have the secure alert because it's the first time we connected into it. You press accept and now you can log in. And now I'm going to log in. there I am and I'm now logged in. So it will tell you on the ETHO address that this is still your local address. So that address has not changed. And then for tail scale, what that address is. So now you're in. So when you have wing bits installed, you can easily go into that. So right now I'm taking my tail scale IP address that I have for, on my one of my bit harvest devices. And I'm just going to right click and paste that address into the top. And now I'm at the bit harvest screen. I'm going to put my pin in there that bit harvest gave me. And here we are. I've got my helium device at a glance. 
put this back to normal size so y'all can see it. I zoomed it up so y'all can see into the SSH, but you can see that my devices are going. And what I like about this is even with tail scale, I'm using that IP address. When I come into wing bits, I can still come here and I can hit tar 1090. And this is going to use the tar 1090 from the tail scale address. So I don't have to worry about any kind of port forwarding or anything like that. Boom, here it is. I see my range is coming back. I wish I could catch it while it was while I was getting this, but uh, yeah, we still hitting this 300 miles, and yet I got people arguing with me about antennas. I can make. I'm not gonna make this this kind of video. Video. I'm gonna rise above, as they say. But um, you know, we're here 5:40 in the evening. Traffic has tailed off a little bit. Still getting 184. Tell you what, though. I was having a discussion with somebody earlier about an antenna and somebody mentioned about a 12.1 DBR. And apparently they haven't watched my last two videos where I keep getting triggered over this question, but this is Poplar Bluff, which is actually right where I go deer hunting at. If y'all ever heard me talk about deer hunting in South Missouri and it's right here in Mingo and Poplar Bluff. I wish I could have caught this plane. I, I thought I, I probably would have been amazed by it. But this plane right here, you're looking at 454 miles. Now, we all know that that's not consistent all the time because you can easily look back on here and see that I'm not getting all that. But you see this blue right here. I mean, and you know right now, they got planes probably flying through here and I'm not catching them. But I guess it all matters the height, the weather, which way the wind's blowing, what the humidity is. And everything like that but you can see that this is the 200 mile marker right here but this ain't this ain't that kind of video i'm gonna leave it for tail scale and just leave it for tail scale so y'all see how tail scale works y'all can put it on other devices and stuff like that and now you can remote manage and you don't have to worry about you know how you're going to ssh and having to open ssh ports there's no ports that have to be open or anything like that on on the routers or anything like that I don't have anything port forwarded or anything like that. It it finds its way through that. That's for somebody who knows way more about networking than me that he can explain how that works. But I didn't have to do any kind of port forwarding, SSH, or changing ports or anything like that. Y'all saw how I installed it, and that's how I installed it. And that's how I've installed it for, I got about 20 devices running this right now. So in closing, this is a very rare short video, actually, under 15 minutes. I know y'all can think I'm not feeling well or something. Usually when I say short videos, that means it's an hour. So make sure that, you know, y'all join our Facebook group, DPIN and other passive income projects, crypto ADSB projects and stuff like that. We almost had 300 members and we discuss, you know, and people throw ideas out for just to let everybody know of different projects that are out there with it and how they're doing with them and stuff like that. There is a link in this, in this description for this. Please make sure you like this video. When you like the video, it spreads all this content out for people on YouTube so they can see that. They can see all the different playlists I have and for all these projects and which is going to help the project. And those projects becoming more popular helps us out for us that are putting the effort in, you and me, for putting the effort into these projects. So please make sure you like this video. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel. We have new videos coming out close to almost every day right now. There's so much going on and it seems like as soon as I think I'm making a video about something, some kind of new news comes up and I already know what I'm my, probably my next two or three videos are going to be just because there's so much new stuff constantly coming out. So make sure you hit subscribe and make sure you like this video. Thank you all and see you all in the next video.